Hello friends, this video on body fluids and circulation part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us, now that we have reached almost towards the end of this lesson, we have talked about all the body fluids, we have talked about the process of circulation, uh, we also talked about the heart in detail. So now let us quickly discuss the overall blood circulation process which we have discussed so far. So this is the overall circulation of blood in our body. So what happens is when we breathe in, we breathe in oxygen. So that oxygen reaches the lungs. So this is where the oxygen reaches, that is the lungs. Now the lungs sends the oxygenated blood to the heart. And then the oxygenated blood, where does the oxygenated blood reaches? It reaches the auricles. From the auricle, the oxygenated blood moves from the left auricle. It moves into the left ventricle. And from left ventricle, it moves to the different parts of the body. So you can see this, it moves to different parts of the body. The red color, wherever you see, that is the oxygenated blood. Now from different parts of the body, the deoxygenated blood comes in and it enters the heart through the left through the right auricle and now the right auricle sends it to the right ventricle from right ventricle it goes back to the lungs again the lungs take out the carbon dioxide from the deoxygenated blood and pushes the carbon dioxide outside through the nostril and takes in oxygen and makes the blood oxygenated and this process keeps on continuing and that is how blood circulates throughout the body. So if you see now, if you have actually understood whatever I have taught in this lesson, then you will get to know that the concepts behind such complicated things happening in our body are quite simple and once you understand the complex, it becomes very easy for you to understand the processes taking place inside your body. So now that we have discussed all the circulatory pathways, let us have a quick review of what we, where we started from. We started with fishes, reptiles and human beings, right? So I said that fishes have a two-chambered heart. So if you see, this is the two-chambered heart. Then we said that the reptiles and amphibians except the crocodiles, they have a three-chambered heart. So here if you see, this is the three-chambered heart, one, two, three. And the human beings, they have a four-chambered heart. That is one, two, three, four. Right? So here you can see that in all these different animals, they have different ways of circulation. So if you look at the fish, in fish all of them are like closed circulatory system. So here if you see this portion, this is the deoxygenated blood. So this is taken up by the gills. So this upper portion denotes the gill circulation that is the deoxygenated blood goes to the gills and the oxygenated blood comes from the gills and it goes to the different parts of the body and this portion is the systemic circulation so basically this is one single circulation here so here in case of fishes this is one single circulation where both the gill circulation and systemic circulation take place but in case of amphibians and human beings, we have double circulation. Where we have one specific pulmonary circulation and another systemic circulation. So by looking at this figure, you can actually point out the differences between the circulatory system of fishes, reptiles and human beings. So with this, we will end our discussion on the circulatory system. Now let us look at some of the disorders which can happen due to some misfunction of the circulatory system. Now some of the common disorders of the circulatory system are hypertension, heart failure, coronary artery disease, and Kina, these are some of the common disorders. Now, hypertension is something which I'm sure all of you are aware of. Maybe your grandparents or somebody who is very old at your family, you would have heard that they are suffering from some heart disease or because it is something very common, especially hypertension is something very common. So let us look at the causes and symptoms of the common circulatory disorders. So we will start with hypertension. So this problem of hypertension is often referred to as 
high BP that is high blood pressure so basically it means whenever the blood pressure is anything greater than the normal blood pressure depending upon the age of the patient but otherwise normally the normal blood pressure is taken as 120 by 80 so if the blood pressure is more than this the patient is said to suffer from hypertension or high blood pressure now what happens if the pressure is high so in this case what happens is that because this pressure actually denotes the pressure exerted by the blood on the walls of the blood vessels now if the pressure is so high there are chances that the blood vessels might be ruptured so the heart has to work harder to pump blood to our body now when the heart works so harder this hardens the arteries and can cause heart failure now some of the symptoms is symptoms and cause causes persistently elevated blood pressure in the arteries and some symptoms now there are no specific symptoms as such but this can cause severe damage to kidneys heart brain and other organs sometimes it happens that when the heart blood pressure goes too high it can cause heart failure heart attack or it can even cause uh, attack to your brain so that means it can be fatal so that is why in order to keep it under control, there are certain external factors which can be controlled. For example, smoking, alcohol, being obese or if you have some genetic history of the same. So the diet and all those stuff can be taken care of. A proper diet, uh, good exercise, not trying to gain weight. All these things can help to control hypertension. Next is heart failure. So heart failure occurs, the cause is the heart fails to pump blood effectively. So that is the purpose of the heart, that it has to pump blood. But if the heart is not able to pump blood, that is known as heart failure. Now if this happens, obviously the survival chance decreases. Because the, if the blood is not being pumped out of the heart, blood will not reach different parts of the body. So the circulation will stop, the cells of the body will uh, lack nutrients they need. So some of the symptoms are shortness of breath, irregular heartbeat, weakness, cough, weight gain. So weight gain is something which is not at all good for any of the heart diseases. One is heart attack. Now many people think that heart failure and heart attack are one of the same thing, but they are not. When we say heart failure, that means the heart is not able to pump blood properly. But when we say heart attack, that means that the heart muscles are damaged due to lack of blood supply that means the muscles are not getting sufficient oxygen and that is why the muscles have got damaged and the muscles are not working properly now see all the diseases are related to each other for example hypertension can cause heart failure hypertension can cause heart attack similarly heart attack and heart failure are also related if the, if the muscles heart muscles are damaged that means the heart will not be able to pump blood effectively so that means they are linked but these two are two different things now what can happen due to lack of blood supply or when can there be a lack of blood supply now it can happen that some of the arteries or the veins have got blocked so when they get blocked due to deposition of some fibrous tissue or due to deposition of fat or cholesterol, that time the blood doesn't flow properly. So the heart muscles do not get proper supply of blood and as a result heart attack can take place. Some of the symptoms are heart stops beating, chest pain, these are some of the symptoms. Sometimes the patient sweats too much when there is a heart attack. Coronary artery disease which is also known as atherosclerosis. So what happens here is uh, the lumen of the arteries are narrowed down. That is let us suppose arteries are tube like structures something like this. Now let us suppose what would happen if this becomes thinner. Now if it becomes too thin then the blood components might not be able to travel through it properly. So in that case also there might be inadequate blood supply to different parts of the body. So some of the symptoms here again is chest pain because if you are, you are not getting proper blood so if proper blood is not received then obviously the heart will not be able to function properly. And you know this is another disease which is caused due to lack of oxygen supply to the heart muscles. So the heart muscles also need sufficient oxygen they also need sufficient blood to 
perform their function so here also the symptom would be acute chest pain so these are some of the common circulatory disorders their causes and symptoms but some of the common things that can be controlled to prevent any sort of circulatory disorder is quit smoking quit alcohol or reduce it to a large extent not try to be obese that is maintain a proper weight uh, try to have a healthy diet and exercise properly thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.